Greetings, this is Father Michael with our Word of the Week. This week's word is doubt. I can't tell you the number of times people will come to me, faithful Catholics, for lifelong, and will say, Father, I'm having doubts. I'm having a sense of unsurety in my faith. And here's a little secret I'll share just with those of you who are watching. I, too, sometimes have doubts about where God is in my life, where God is calling me to be. In the gospel, this Easter season for Sunday, we hear of the great ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ into heaven, and we might think that it erases all doubts. The fact that God who came to earth, who took on our human nature, who suffered, died for us, and then rose again from the dead, now finds himself at the right hand of the Father, this is certain victory. And it is. And yet, so why after this time of ascension, when Jesus has in fact declared victory over all sin and death, can we still remain in doubt? But we see this happens in the gospel. In the gospel, Jesus leads the apostles up to that mount from which he will ascend. And in the gospel of Mark, we hear today, it says... They knew who Jesus was, they worshipped, but they doubted. <laughs> they doubted. And it's interesting to think, can our doubts truly be what keeps us from God? Well, certainly they can. And yet for the apostles, even in the midst of doubting, what did they do? They still worshipped. <laughs> so I know for myself, when there are seeds of uncertainty, when there are moments when my faith is weak, when I am prone to doubt, especially intellectually, it means I'm called to redouble my efforts to prayer, to come to worship. When someone says, I'm struggling with the faith, I'll ask them, do you pray every day? <laughs> are you coming to Sunday Mass? Are the sacraments at the heart of your life? Because if not, no wonder you're doubting. Even those who worship <laughs> can still experience doubt, all the more if we're not. So that's the first point to make, that in the midst of doubts, it's precisely in that moment, not despite our doubts, but because of our doubts, that we are led into what? Worship. It's interesting, Jesus never calls us to worship expecting that we fully understand everything we're doing. That's why we have rituals that bring us into the divine activity of what God is doing for us, not necessarily what we're doing for Him, right? We come to participate in worship, and worship is, first of all, an act of God, and secondly, an act of us connecting to that divine action so that we might be brought into relationship with the Father. So at the Mass, we take what? Bread and wine. What do we do with that? Well, we offer it to the Father, and He gives us back nothing less than His Son. Can we doubt that? Can we be uncertain that the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is really in that host and in that wine or transforming those elements? Absolutely. And yet, by worshiping, by taking, not necessarily understanding, but being open to that, to express that belief and to receiving, to eating, take and eat, he says, that indeed is where the Lord is encountered. And this brings to the second moment. In the midst of doubts, First of all, called the worship. But then we are called to do what? To do what Jesus tells his apostles. Go forth to all nations and do what? Share the gospel, right? To make disciples and baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In other words, Mark says, in this moment of doubt, Jesus says, share it out. <laughs> share out the gospel, right? In other words, if Jesus saw the apostles as doubting people, you might think he said, well, these are not the guys I want to go share the gospel. I need guys who are all in. I need people who are 100% clear about the mission. No, he precisely chooses people who are open to worship in the midst of doubting, and even in that doubt are bold enough, brave enough, and as we'll see with the giving of the Holy Spirit, inspired enough to proclaim it, to shout it out to all of the nations. For us, this means if we are in doubt, another question we might ask ourselves is, are we sharing? 
our faith with others. Are we talking about, are we inviting others to share in the worship experience we have in terms of praying with this Father? I can't tell you how often I'll meet someone and they're having struggles, perhaps a couple, and I say, well, are you praying together about this? Well, now we pray individually, but not as a couple. Oh my goodness. <laughs> if you're not praying <laughs> together <laughs> as a family, as a couple, in the community God has given you, of course, doubts are going to reign supreme. If you're not worshiping on a consistent basis every week, of course there's going to be doubts in our life. What indeed gives us, not a sense of clarity, but gives us a sense of faith in the midst of doubt is worshiping and evangelizing, sharing in that way. Today as we celebrate the feast of the Lord who is assumed body and soul into heaven, and not just assumed, ascends into heaven, we recognize that God calls us, even in the midst of doubt, to worship and to share, to pray and to evangelize. And in that way, the ascended Christ becomes for us, once again, the Christ who is living and powerful in our hearts and our lives. Lord Jesus, you who have ascended to the Father, indeed, be with us in our doubts. Help us to worship you and help us to share and radiate your joy. Amen, amen. If you're enjoying these videos, do like, comment, subscribe. Also go to our website. May the Lord indeed radiate in your life and may we radiate the joy of the gospel here in the heart of the city.